How's everybody this morning? Good. Welcome to Friends in Low Places. I am tired as hell. <laughs> Getting ready to get some sleep. Uh, the crew's going to take it over from here. Um, this has been an interesting last two years. A uh, lot of love in this building. A lot of love has gone in this building. A lot of somebody else's sweat, not mine, but uh, there's a lot of people that's come together to, to bust their ass to make this happen. Uh, I would like to first start off by just saying that Nashville is known for its artistry. People, the people we got in this town is bricklayers, welders, carpenters. The artistry in this building is phenomenal. It's all done here locally with the exception of maybe um, the palm trees, where they come out of Detroit, Jenny. Um, so uh, I think it's a place called Prop Art uh, in Detroit. Uh, they took care of the palm trees, the ones on the roof as well. And uh, so just really a big hats off to our local here. And then I got to say a big hats off to, if you guys have been here in the soft opening, I, I hope the thing you notice most here are the people who work here. Good people. Um, ageless kind of people, whether they're whatever, 30s, 40s, 20s, whatever, you won't know because they're just love. Just good hard workers. Elevators have not been working, so I have seen a perfect blend of females, males, whether they were weigh as much as the beer they're toting, they're going up and down the stairs, they work their ass off, and they do it with a smile. So uh, hats off to uh, all the guys here at Friends and that whole hiring fair. Uh, we've got some great, great people in this town that's either moved here from somewhere else or from here. So this has been a great culmination of that. I'm looking at the art around the room. And I got to think of Jeff Stampler uh, that did this along with Llewellyn and Jeff Crump. Uh, but Stampler uh, worked at the uh, Hall of Fame forever. And uh, his work is alive and well here. And I think that's what I love most about this too. Between you guys, between the people working here, the people building it, their knowledge of country music and the history of it and the respect of it is in every brick and every board that's in this place. So um, I'm real excited about this place's future. Um, I will tell you this, probably my favorite thing in this bar is not in this bar. It's the police substation right next door. So anybody that knows their history in this town, down here on Lower Broad, there was an alley there before. And it was Max and Ben Goldberg that said, hey, look, the best way for that alley to become something good and not something bad is to put it to use. So uh, thanks to our neighbors, Earners Tub, we signed the alley over to the city. The city then allowed it to come back to us if we would pay for a police substation right next door. And I'll tell you, if that's the only reason this whole bar comes up, it's reason enough for me. Uh, our men and women in blue in this city, we're one of the fastest growing cities ever. I think for the last three years straight, we've been the number one real estate city. People with the growth of real estate, with the growth of the city, also is going to come with the growth of the bad things that we don't want. Our men and women in blue here, Commander Drake, and everybody below him and equal to him have done a tremendous job here. It's neat to be part of this family any way we can help. But the truth is, this is the neon neighborhood of Nashville. And we, you know, this, this place down here, everybody just loves everybody. They're in a community. But it's really, really nice to see that they have a home now right down here on Lower Broad instead of always having to go up around. I think they're on like maybe 6th and Koreans or something like that up on the corner. Um, so I did, to say that I'm proud is crazy. I, I, of course I'm proud, but uh, we had a toast last night when it was all over and just said, hey, look, what you do matters, but who you do it with matters more. And I love the people that's here. Uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to, to Max and Ben Goldberg, Jenny and Camille. Uh, I, gotta, I think you gotta tip our hat uh, to Bob, uh, Bob the Builder, the guy that's worked for R.C. Matthews that kind of did this done. Uh, dad and son team of R.C. Matthews, fabulous. So the ones that saved the Ryman, they sure saved our ass enough times in here. And then of course, all our guys out on tour as well uh, came in here. So like Moo, TV, uh, Claire, Sound, Watney Staging, Bandit Lights, they did a great, great job here. And I think we've got to tip our hat to Gary Birdwell, um, a retired fire captain here in the city that's also one of the greatest contractors and builders I have ever known in my life. And I've, I've been lucky enough to build in several, different, in, uh, in several different states, different places. This guy's the best. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. If you have a question for me and Ms. Sherwood, let's, let's take a couple questions that I can answer. And then if it gets too complicated for me, I'll introduce her then. And then uh, she can take it from there. But yeah, let's go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Um, can you just talk about 
Young Garth. Can you talk about Young Garth coming to Nashville, being down here on Broadway, having some fun in the honky tonks, and what he would think of the fact that you are now one of the biggest pieces of real estate down here and adding to the culture? It's crazy. So you know Bob Doyle. Bob Doyle and I have been together since 1987, right? And Bob is sitting in that, one of those booths back there, and I'm right next to him going, we've played every one of these places. Now to think you own one? It's pretty cool. So I think what you do is you think, what did you learn in those honky-tonks? And here's the great thing for me, the honky-tonks weren't as far away as you and I think they were because of the single with Blake, Dive Bar. So now you go back into those honky-tonks, you learn very, very quickly what you want. Am I standing on a stage that's better than any frickin' stage ever played? Yes. Has any honky-tonk we ever played had a green room? No, right? And so actually between me and the guys that built all this, I kind of bitched at them. I said, why are you making it so nice? Come on. But they wanted to make it nice. Uh, everything including the G that I'm standing on right here. It's all about supporting that local artist. Get them out here, get them to play. If it's their first time or their 5,000th time, make it the first time and the fresh time for them, right? So that's kind of our job here. Uh, and then take it a 30,000 foot view down. This world's in a, in a nasty place right now. Build a place where people love one another. That's what we want to do here. Become the ripple, right? It starts here and it ripples out. So I don't think you're going to find a better family than the country music family because it, it encases all the rodeo families. If you like the way those kids grew up, I love that style, military style. It's all encased in country music. So that's why we called it a honky tonk and a bar because a honky tonk is a living, breathing space and we have a good chance to do something good here and we're gonna take every chance we can to get it done. Yes, sir. Hey Garth, Matt with the Music Universe. Um, there's a line out the door for seven o'clock tonight. That's very sweet. I think uh, some people might be expecting a, a neon neighbor to be appearing tonight. I know there was some confusion with wristbands and things and Studio G on Monday. Are any plans for tonight? Any surprises? For me? Yeah. No, I'm going to be sleeping. Trust <laughs> me. I'm going to be so asleep. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm to be asleep before I leave here. <laughs> um, these guys, have uh, they've done that whole thing on the 11th hour. Uh, I'm kidding you not. If anybody was in here a week ago, that roof, the roof looked like it was going to be another six months, right? And they just, somehow, I don't know how they did it. But I do know the one thing that they didn't do was sleep. None of us have. So we're all laughing at Ben and Max and Camille and Jenny because their work starts tonight. We're going home and going to bed. But, uh, so it, it's going to be fun. We'll catch up on it on social media. Uh, but I've told everybody I, I will not be here for grand opening. But it's, uh, it's been fun getting it to this point. Anybody else? Why not? Yes, sir. So, so here's the question. There's a couple different ways to approach owning a bar here, right, in, in downtown. You can kind of lease your naming rights. You can let somebody else do it for you. Obviously, completely different approach that you've taken. You've, you've been down cleaning the floors and, you know, laying carpet. What made that so special for you that you had to be involved in every decision all across the board and, and just taking this to heart so much? That's very sweet. What is your name, please? I'm Ron. Hey, Ron. Uh, uh, can we just be honest with each other? Yeah, sure. I'm not sure looking back over the last two years that now I wouldn't do the other way. Right. That's <laughs> sure. Shit. Right. It's, <laughs> it's tough, right? Man, it's just, it's a lot of money in and it's a lot of hours in. But uh, I told Miss Yearwood, I said, uh, every decision you make, this is what Bob Doyle teaches you. Every decision you make, try and go 20 years ahead of yourself and look back on it. What is it doing? 20 years from now, if this place is hopefully what I want it to be, this place will be love. And that's it. And the thing with licensing and everything, good for that. But you can't get your best shot at love there. So what I love is when you talk about those people that are outside here, they will notice the minute they step in here. Oh, that, that, that. Because they're me and I'm them, right? They'll know the touches. Oh, Garth had to do that, right? Or taste this food. Oh, my God, have you seen the size of Garth? I know he loves this, right? I think they know me inside now. So I think that's, that's going to be my thing. I can't imagine. 
It would be like somebody else going and playing a Garth concert that just has karaoke, right? I want it to be me. I want them to breathe this. I want them to feel it. And the truth is, man, there's a lot of arguments. You guys, you came through on the tour up there. Been a lot of arguments between me and Miss Sherwood of what goes where. And I hate to say it, but and I, I would lie right now, but Jenny's right there. She's been right 99% of the time. And so it's, it's been fun to do this together. But when you walk in this place, understand this is me and her. Uh, if you guys, how many people remember Paradise Park uh, that was here? You guys were here? This was, um, this was a game room above us, threw axes and stuff in, in this room. Well, it was Max, of all people, that said he's always wanted to rip this floor out and get what he calls a voyeur, voyeuristic view of down here, down here. I thought he was crazy. And now, when you see an act here, we had one here two nights ago that I got to watch from up here. That's the best seat in the house. So it's ideas like that that I'd like to claim for my own, but the truth is it's been a... It's been a, a joint kind of thing. And so now I guess between me and you sitting here talking and explain it, hell no, I'd do it exactly the same way again. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Everybody good? Can yeah. we, can we, oh yes ma'am. Hi, my name's Hanley, I'm with iHeart. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Hanley? Yes. Very nice Thank you, nice to meet you too. Um, one of my questions is, you kind of mentioned it earlier, but how exciting was it for you to kind of go back in time and find all those little Easter eggs that you're able to plant around the bar that you know that you and your fans are going to be able to have that moment together with? Well, what's really cool is the time that you spend with people, you become family with them. I did not know Jenny. I did not know Camille. I didn't know the brothers, right? But when you spend every freaking second of them for two years on something like this important, all of a sudden they start surprising you with what they know about you, right? So there's a Dr. Pepper ship somewhere in this bar. It took me about 15 seconds to find it, right? Because they know my love for Dr. Pepper. I'm sitting at the Sevens booth in the Sevens Club, and above it, it's the stupidest thing on the planet that I love the most. It's a little box that says break in case of emergency and it's peanut butter M&Ms in there, right? So these people start to know you. There are more sevens in this bar than you can shake a stick at. I still haven't found all of them. And they've kind of had a joy of putting an Easter egg, like etching it in some wood and stuff. So um, the weird thing, the bathrooms, one of these bathrooms, all it is is sevens. But it looks like squiggly lines until you really look at it and it's all sevens. So they, they know what it means to me. And uh, those are sweet little things. So as much as the people coming in here are going to get Easter eggs because they know me, I'm getting Easter eggs because they know me as well. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Hey, uh, Garth. Yes, sir. So question in relation to crowd flow and crowd control. I'm over here. I'm sorry. Oh. How you doing, buddy? So there's a really good sense that people will be able to be able to move in here without feeling like they're bumping into each other and there's a lot of like issues as far as people not being able to have their own space in here. Talk to me about crowd flow and crowd control in this venue and how you designed for that. Yeah, well, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, one is uh, people, if, if you want to know the secret to marketing, it's, 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 pretty, it's a pretty hard thing to define, so try and hang with me. Treat people the way you want to be treated. That's marketing. When you walk in here, how do you want to feel? How do you want to be treated? Me, I want it to be loud, I want it to be fun, but I really, really want it to be safe, right? So you work on everything since they totally cleaned the floors out, you work on egress. You gotta have this many stairways for this many people, well hell, throw another stairway in there then. Have more than you need for egress. Because the worst thing that can happen to a bar that wants to be love is something bad happen in the bar. The police, uh, when they moved in, they said, hey man, can we introduce some thoughts to you how to make this a safer bar? So now they have safe bars here that you take your instruction, your bartenders do instructions, right? And then you get your label on the front window that you do that this is a safe bar. Because what we want is we want people who come down here just want to be fun. And we are a tourist city. People think about that. Don't bitch about that. Be thankful about that. Vegas is a city of service. They realize they live off of people outside that city. Nashville lives off of people outside this city. We're very lucky that they want to come here. 
They want to come here for country music, professional sports, but while they're here, they should have the time of their life. They should feel like they're welcome here, right? First time customer by chance, repeat customer by choice. So that's what you want to do here. So you want this to be safe. The police came in and said, hey, if you have a medical emergency, what we'd like to do is launch a system where one button gets hit, all the lights come up, and the music totally goes down. This is the first bar that's going to have that system. And I'm hoping that every bar along this road gets that system because that's what the police need. They're here for the better good of all of us. Uh, so just things like that that you want to want to get done. I hope that answered your question. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Garth. Uh, I'm curious. Did you ever hear back from Travis Kelsey when you invited him to perform at the bar? Oh, no, no. That, that was, I, I didn't expect the Big Yeti to come here. I mean, it's, it's, that was a joke, right? Because he, he, um, he did me a great favor by singing. So I wanted to give him another shot at the title uh, if he wanted to come here. But um, no, that was, I couldn't imagine that happening. Uh, I love him. I love his family. And I thought, um, I thought the, uh, the whole moment um, with his family and the retirement speech uh, just brought tears to me. I love it. So I love people that take life that passionate. So anybody that that's passionate always has an invitation to this place. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can we bring the queen out? Is that good now? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is kind of a, 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 it doesn't have to be for you, but how I think about it, this is an American treasure right here. This is a hall of fame that should already be in. She is a gift to all of us, but I watched her in this bar. I watched her with Jenny. I watched her with Camille and she will work as hard as anybody. And she's one of the most talented people I've ever got to meet. And she is the love of my life. Please make welcome Miss Trisha Yearwood. <laughs> Nice intro. Thank you very much. I have a question for both of you, actually. I'm over here. It's Joyce with Amazon hey, Music. Joyce. So you um, had cameras following this whole process for the documentary. So I'm wondering how you found that process. Was it invasive? Was it weird? And what kind of stuff can we expect uh, when the documentary launches tonight? Well, for me, you know, I've been shooting a cooking show for about 10 years. And so it, is, it has become strangely not weird to be you know, be followed by cameras. It gets really normal. I do find that when I'm home after shooting the cooking show that I'm in the kitchen alone, smiling, and saying things like, coming up, Garth, I'll cook you a breakfast of a lifetime, something like that. But, um, I mean, it, it was uh, what they were capturing, and when you see the whole series, it's so well done. I'm so proud of it. Um, I mean, I, I'm kind of glad to, when we go home today, there, there won't be cameras following us, will there? Um, kind of excited about that but it's it's actually been really good they i think they've captured a lot of really great stuff yeah first of all all that stuff kind of hangs in the balance of how good the film crew is and we were lucky enough to draw the best just the sweetest it looks amazing and they weren't very invasive at all like you said but that's also a blessing and a curse because you see yourself and you're like god what's wrong with your posture right and then your potty mouth you're going like well you gotta fix that and then I've always thought of myself, and please forgive me, as an athlete before I ever thought of myself as a musician. So I still have the off season, pulling weight, gaining weight. It's the heaviest anybody's ever seen me during this show. And I'm like looking at it. So I see all the negatives. I see her show up in a t-shirt that says, support your local farmer. She doesn't have her contacts in and she's got sweat bottoms on and she looks fantastic. So I, I don't know how that happened, but. I didn't know we were filming that day. Yeah. And it's fun because you get to run into to like Jenny and Camille. Jenny and Camille look like they're opening the nightclub every time they come here. Yes, for sure. So you'll see them in, in sparkly shoes and an evening gown and a hard hat on, and it's not a joke. That's how they come to work, and the, the workers loved it. Yeah, they're not dressed for the show. They're just, that's, just how they, that's just how they roll. It's good. Really cool. And also, a lot of things were like, hey, can you just capture this on iPhone today? Or, you know, so it was, it was, they made it work for us as best they could. It was really well done. Yeah, and another gift that this town has are the Goldberg brothers. They're just honest. I think they've opened maybe 10, 12 uh, restaurants in this town uh, through their time here. But what I loved about them is they just tell you what it's like. Good news, bad news. They're just going to tell you, and the camera's right there. And, you know, you want to pull them aside and go, hey, you know, you can show them just the good side if you want. But they, they were extremely honest, and their honesty makes you love them and follow them. 
And kudos to them for jumping in because they really didn't, I don't remember if we really asked them if they wanted to be a part of this show. We just started filming them. So thanks for doing that. Yeah, and I can guarantee you this, the thought of the bar down here on, on town and the, and the questions, never, if it wasn't for the Goldberg brothers, never, wouldn't be. never, ever would wouldn't be, be. Those. You guys want to give somebody a mic either one? Thank you very much. Hey, Trisha. Hey. Uh, so I'm excited to see the full menu. I know you've had a hand in, in everything food and drink related here. Can you talk about uh, designing the menu, picking from your cookbooks, and what you were going for in the story the food was going to tell here at the bar? Well, you know, one of the coolest things that people have said from the cooking show is, I feel like I could be in your kitchen with you and it wouldn't be weird. You know, and I really wish we could taste the food. And so the goal here was to keep it simple, which is what I talk about all the time. All my, most of my recipes are things that my mom made my whole life or my dad, and they were home cooks. And so um, that's, what we're, that's what we're going for here. And, you know, we just talked about the things that you'd want to have. What if you come in here and you're hungry, um, you want to have something that's, that sustains you. So a good burger, but just a regular burger. We tried some fancy versions of burgers. And I was like, let's just do a basic burger. Um, chicken tenders and french fries, like steak fries. Like that's what we, we just, we just made the food that we like. Um, and, um, and then there are things that we pull from the cookbook. Like we talked about, if some of you took the tour uh, about the wedding cake. I mean that we thought it'd be really cool if you came in and you wanted to have Garth and Trisha's wedding cake, let's make it like my mama did and let's serve it. And so, um, we have a meat and three option because we, it, you know, we're in, we're in Nashville, we're in the South and that's how we grew up. So you can get my mom's fried chicken and white gravy. You can get um, meatloaf. You can get um, cooked to death green beans, um, really good cornbread, just kind of keeping it simple. And the way we figured it out was there are things that, you know, I know how to cook for a family. I don't know how to cook for a bar. I don't know how to cook for 200 people, but we have the right people on the bus that know how to do that. And so it's been a process of, um, just going through and saying this this will work on a big scale and maybe this won't. And I'm thinking that the menu is this is where we're starting. I feel like we'll see what works and we'll change it up as we go because we got we got a lot of a lot of recipes to choose from. Continuing on that, I just wanted to know uh, when we took the tour with Jenny. I'm over here. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. She yeah. said that you were actually back in the kitchen, kind of taste testing and making sure that the quality was what you wanted to be. Because I know sometimes when celebrities scale up the size of what's being made, maybe the flavor doesn't turn out the way it's supposed to. So can you just talk about being so hands-on? And I mean, is that gonna be sort of an ongoing thing for you to make sure that the taste is what it's supposed to be and it tastes like Trisha's meatloaf or whatever? Yeah, I'm super stressed out about it, by the way. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you can tell a story. I just wanna give you a little 30 second story and this will answer your question. Um, the apple pie, it's everybody wants it for their birthday on the farm. The, we go through two or three iterations, and finally it's not her going back there and watching. She just said, okay, let's start. And they watched her. She made the pie from scratch, put it in there, came out, and uh, that's how these people, that's how these people are learning, and that's how she's. I think it's like, I don't, yeah, I don't think, I don't know if you've ever made something that, you know, a recipe from somebody else, but, you know, I've made that scaled apple pie so many times that I don't even, I don't look at the recipe and I know the window of time when the butter and the brown sugar look right that's when it's time to take it out of the pan before it caramelizes but it but the sugars had a chance to melt but if you've never made it before you're reading my recipe going I'm not sure when that window is so it's not your fault that you don't know it's just that and also I've written this recipe it makes perfect sense to me it might make absolutely no sense to you so it's the process of just getting on the same page I, I said we're, we're working on this thing um, for the private event floor and they, they're these basically a sausage and biscuit meatball and um, you know it the recipe says mix it till it's smooth well the chef mixed it till it was smooth and you don't do that you just kind of mix it till it comes together and it's pretty chunky and whatever so but if you if you read my recipe so it's that kind of stuff it's just um, you know I've said many times my exotic spices are salt and pepper so we're keeping it simple but if you've never made this food before then you you're gonna have to you know and it might take me coming in and making it I think you're definitely you might not see me down here but I'm gonna be in that kitchen because I want to make sure um, and and I have the toughest critic here he's the first guy to say that's good but it's not hers so we just we got to get it right uh, Wayne D with iHeart Country here uh, question about 
the private floor, right? Uh, it's a members only deal. At what point in this process, because that's one of the most unique things. I mean, the bar is unique itself, but as far as to Broadway, the private club, the Sevens Club, can you tell us at what point that became a part of the plan and why that was important to keep? Yeah, so Wayne, you'll, you'll get this immediately, and we all will, whether you own a bar or not. You got four floors. What they want to do is tear out the middle of the second floor, so one and two become the honky-tonk. You got the roof. Everybody knows what to do with the roof. What do you do with the floor in the middle, right? So these guys at Paradise Park turned it into a 14-room hotel kind of thing because they didn't know what to do with it either. And then what happens with this beautiful thing is, oh, we're in a town that's growing multiple, multiple times. So all the great big ass corporations are moving here and they're all looking for convention space, lunch and dinners, uh, presentation places to do their pitches, sales pitches, all this stuff. The fact that that room above us that you guys saw holds 80 to 100 people comfortably, which is crazy. It's got a private dining room off the, the, the side that holds 18 to 24 comfortably, which is crazy. Right across the wall, you have the Sevens Club, and then there's Trisha's Studio Kitchen. I think it was, um, I think the decision kind of made itself, to tell you the truth, because that's, that's going to be a major income for us in that, that third floor. But what I love is it's going to be a major service for this town, because if you're not from here and they go, hey, where do you want to have your convention? How about friends in low places, right? Because I'm going to tell you right now, and we say this in the, in the Amazon TV series, you can like Garth Brooks, you can not like Garth Brooks, you cannot even know who Garth Brooks is. But 10 to 1, you have saying, friends in low places somewhere on this planet. So if people are from outside this town, they go, where do you want to go, friends in low places? I'm in. So our job, again, here comes the thing where we want to represent this town the best we can, and hopefully we got a classy place for them to come and have convention space. And I think, you know, you, you saw the Sevens Club, and then you saw around the other side, the, the Trisha side, it's, they're very different vibes. I think the Sevens Club, you know, this town can definitely support a place to go make a, make a big deal, and, you know, if you, if, you, if you need to have a quiet space to sit by a fireplace and have a really important conversation. So I think that makes a lot of sense. And then what I see for the, the Trisha side, the Trisha, Trisha Studio Kitchen, I absolutely think the energy in that room when you walk in that kitchen is you got to shoot a show in here. I mean, that wasn't necessarily the original intention. It was like, maybe we'll shoot in here sometimes. I want to do a live show in that spot. I just think that would be so cool. And then, you know, cooking classes and with guest chefs and record release parties. I think that, I think there's all sorts of things you can do. And we lucked out that that floor was a hotel floor because the, the glass got insulated. And so when you shut all those doors, you can hear a little bit of what's happening outside, but you're really insulated. So it, it's gonna work well for a lot of things. Yeah, and, and you, you know, anything you take that is, is a curse, it can also be a blessing. So one of the things, this was an old furniture building. So these big ass columns run all the way from the garage all the way up to the roof. Well, what do you do with those? Well, it's Dan Hines right over here with Claire that says, look, what you want to do with those is build a wall on this side, build a wall on that side, but put nothing but air in between because that's the big, that's the big insulator. I thought you would stuff it with stuff, but if you put it with air where the sound has nothing to grab onto and it just disappears, and so now she can be filming her kitchen show totally quiet right across from the Sevens Bar going crazy over there. So it's, it's, it's had its challenges, but it's also those challenges have all been kind of blessings for us so far. Everybody good? Everybody good? Everybody else Everybody good? good? You guys have been very sweet. Thank you for the help on promoting this. It was very, very nice. Yeah, thank you.